Welcome back to the shop. Today I've got a tool of sorts. And it's not your conventional tool. I've been doing a lot of regular hand tool stuff. But this is arguably one of the most important tools ever developed. And one of the most interesting ones in my opinion. The sewing machine. Now, this is a singer and I'll, sometimes they would call it a child singer or a salesman's singer. And this is a small, this is a, a, as you can see, the size of my hand, this is a, a tiny little working sewing machine. They command a relatively high price in good shape. I've seen them with the wooden boxes and, and the decals all intact and everything, upwards of $400. And I've seen them at auctions and things, and they there's an appeal to these that I I don't necessarily uh, I, I just don't know the market for these things but I know that they command a pretty good pretty high price and this one was very rough on eBay and I went ahead and bought it and uh, and I didn't didn't pay a lot for it but I didn't pay a little for it either uh, well let me just tell you I think I paid about 60 bucks for this thing so it's very rough and I think that it can be restored the this this particular model I haven't tried to force it or do anything to it yet but it seems to be relatively intact. There's pieces to the bobbin down there, uh, but there, there just seems to be a good coat of rust on here that I think I can I can get past, and, uh, and I think it's going to take quite a bit of work. But but this is going to be an interesting uh, restoration project. Now the the reason why I think this is good, what this is particularly interesting to me, is that I've seen one of these in perfect working order before. It was my grandfather had one, and he had picked it up at some a state sale or something like that and it was something that he just really liked it was cool and it was sort of a pride and joy kind of thing that he had and, and it was funny to see somebody who'd seen all the different types of tools and, and 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 contrivances for so many years fixate on something like sewing machine I just didn't hardly expect it but then you know as I got to looking at it seeing all the intricacies and all the different ways this thing works it's it's easy to it's easy to see why he developed such a a liking to this tool and and I said you know this is just pretty neat but you know he got sick and I'm not exactly sure the, the order of events but some asshole broke into the shop and stole the goddamn thing and his was in really nice shape and uh, I don't I don't remember whether he was around for that to happen or not but regardless I, it's very upsetting to know that somebody did that. Just asshole stuff. But anyway, so somebody stole my grandfather's. And, you know, anyway, this still pisses me off. But, you know, I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to make this one, and I'm going I'm to make this one look new again to the best of my ability. And, uh, and I'm going to give it to my mother for Christmas. So, anyway, I hope she likes it. I think it'll be great content for the channel. I think it'll be a great experience, learning experience for me. And, and I'm interested to see how the channel responds to this. I know this is sort of tools and, and the domain of guys' tools stuff. But the sewing machine, I don't think... I, it, it shouldn't deserve the connotation as being just, you know, it's a girl's thing. Knowing how to sew is a really neat skill. And I wish I knew more about it. I have another sewing machine, a modern day sewing machine. I also have a... A 1906 white rotary but sewing is a really neat skill and you know anybody says oh you sew you're a girl well you know that's that's a shame that somebody has that perspective because any skill that's that's useful is, is a good skill so anyway all that aside what I'm gonna do now is just get a couple pictures of this as it were and uh, and hopefully have some a good montage at the end of this of before and after pictures and uh, and hopefully this works out well for me because uh I really like to get this back into the, the family. So, let's get started. Alright, so I've been soaking this in BP Blaster. I sprayed it down and we went out to dinner. And then, uh, and now I'm back. The, the particulars of this are, are, are sort of interesting because the rust there's different types of rust. That some rust is sort of deep and and actually takes away the metal. Some some rust will sort of expand out and swell up. And, and this has a lot of fitted uh, joints and components and whatnot. So I think what I'm going to do is that it, it would be a a fruitless task to go ahead and try to disassemble this 
with it being this rusty. What I need to do is get this rust off of here and then disassemble it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray this down with some carburetor cleaner, brake parts cleaner to get the... Uh, well, I might try to take this wooden handle off because I don't want to sandblast it. Um, but take off the little bit that I can take off now. Uh, get rid of the, the oil and residual stuff on here with the brake parts cleaner. Get it nice and dry and then bring it over to the media blaster. So I'm going to do that now. Alright, so I've had it through the sandblaster, and the sandblaster does a pretty good job. Of course, I, I missed a couple spots here and there, but, that, but that's not too important at this stage. What I wanted to do was, was free up all the rust, all the loose rust that was on these journals here. Because these should all move at some point in time, and, and I'm not an expert at anything even remotely close to this stuff. So I think, I think what might be prudent for me to do now is not to attempt not to attempt to disassemble this whole thing and just hope that it all comes back together all right i think what might be a prudent course of action in this case is to take a little bit of heat and just sort of get in here and touch these points that i think move or should move and then when it's heated up and it's expanded i think i'm gonna put a little bit of pb blaster in there and see if i can get this to work because right now it is just locked up solid and i don't want to force anything but I would also like to get an idea of how the the motions of this thing works. I have an idea that this turns and and this is going to of course rock back and forth and there's probably got to be some take up mechanism that either is, isn't here or I'm not recognizing. Um, again, I don't know a lot about sewing machines but but I think what I'm going to do now is try to get it freed up without disassembling anything at this point. So I'm going to put some heat on it, some PV blaster and uh, see what happens. Alright, this seems to have no... Uh, it gives me no indication that it wants to move at this point in time. So I think what I'm going to try to do now is start removing some of the bolts that maybe give me access to these journals in here and, um, and just try to be as gentle as I can through this. Some of you are probably going to cringe watching me do this, but sometimes an impact that shocking power is, is the best thing to do to get a stuck bolt loose. Now it, it looks really aggressive, but sometimes it's that shocking force that really does the is the is the best possible thing you can do to get a really stuck bolt loose. But make sure that the make sure that the the bolt or the screwdriver that you're fitting that you're using just fits as tight as humanly possible. You really want that to be snug. You see how there's like no wiggle room there? It's really got to be in there good. Alright, so you can see that PB blaster got down inside that journal and helped him release this. I'm making some progress. Now there's a couple bolts here down at the bob and I would be nicer if I could get this set screw out of here, but it seems to be at the wrong orientation now, and I'm not sure if I can get that freed up. Okay, this is this is interesting. This plate here is for the foot, for the, it's, I don't know if you would call it the walking foot mechanism, 
But this, if you can see where the set screw is at, pay attention to the diameter between the set screw there and the diameter between the shaft here. That's an eccentric. And that eccentric happens to match the outside of this. So this is a cam that's driving this bottom foot. So, uh, anyway, maybe that is a, I don't know, no, that, no, a walking foot is this part. So this is the foot of it. A walking foot would be up here, sorry about that. Uh, but anyway, so this is going to advance your material, and this seems to be locked up pretty damn tight, so I think I'm going to have to come back and put a little bit more heat on here. Alright, so this is sort of interesting here because the sandblaster will not remove things that aren't rigid. It has to be very, very stiff or, or immovable. If it's greasy or whatever, it just will push it around. In this case, there just happens to be a bunch of string caught up here. And I wonder if this was probably the reason they parked this. Because the string got so bound up into this mechanism here that this may have led to the, the downfall of this machine. So let me get this string. You can see it coming out of the bottom here. But you know, maintenance is always the killer of things, or lack thereof. And perhaps somebody just never got around to cleaning this machine. Or they got, I don't know, that's a, lot of, that's a lot of strength for a toy machine. But, uh, but maybe that's what had something to contribute to the demise of this machine. Maybe if I clear this up, maybe it'll free up. Now, there are certain times that, that tricks from one craft will translate over to another craft. One of the tricks for rebuilding engines that I learned when I was a kid is that if you're going to clean, like uh, an oil pump screen is very hard to clean if you're just going at it with a brush and stuff like that. But it's very easy to clean if you light the thing on fire. And I think that's a little bit smaller than my, my little pick we'll get into. And it sort of reminded me of the times of trying to clean out an oil screen, so I think I'm going to try to burn this out of here. See how that works. Now that got just about all of it out of there. All right, so there's the, here's the foot, and then there's this retaining spring. Oh, good, that came out. Now this is going to be the bobbin, and if I can find a good dramatic diagram or something, an animation, hopefully how this works, um, I will insert it here because it's just more than I can wrap my mind around to explain to you in some sort of uh, decipherable way. I just I just don't. I, I can, I've seen them, I know they work, but it's still almost voodoo to me. Uh, but I have a feeling that that bobbin should come out of here. Anyway, I'm going to work on that. Alright, I sort of rail against vice grips, but in this particular case it worked good to pull this bobbin right out of the end of the shaft. Alright, so I got that cam off now. You can see that eccentric, how it's off-center there. Alright, so this has been... I, this is probably going to make for some horrible video because I've just been sort of face down in this thing trying to figure it out. Uh, some of the interesting things that I've learned so far is that the... The, tra the, the, the rocking arm, the rocker arm that goes on here, I wasn't sure how it was affixed on there. It sort of seems to be pressed on. So if you're having trouble figuring out how that goes on there, that should just pop off of there. And then this back end just clips in. So that was, I was working around that the whole time, not knowing what was going on. And it, luckily it just flew off. Uh, right now, I think these needles, this needle should obviously go up and down. And it doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Um, I've put heat on it a couple times. And I've been pounding on it with a, a small brass hammer. Uh, to no avail. I think I might just uh, let this soak overnight and come back when I'm a little fresher 
and uh, and I don't make any hasty judgments or uh, hasty decisions. So anyway, I'm gonna soak this and uh, come back to it later. All right, it's the next day. I've been uh, letting this soak with BP blaster on it. I gave it some pretty decent heat. I didn't want to completely change. I'm pretty well. I accidentally heated the spring out more than I wanted to. Usually that takes the spring right out of it, but uh, but anyway, I have a pile of extra springs, but uh, but if I can save it, I will. Um, but I'm not hopeful on getting these out. I, I'm going to try as hard as I can. I, I'd like to keep it original. However, if things go south, I went to the store and bought some stock. Um, so if I have to remake these on the mini lathe, I will. Um, I looked at them online to try to buy new ones. They're very expensive. Um, I don't think they're outrageously expensive, but there's sort of a demand destruction thing going on. I think that, that people that have some of these parts price them to the point where you know they don't really want to sell them, and people don't really want to buy them, and they really don't have to do work, but for a certain amount of money they'll be willing to get off the couch and, and ship it to you. They're asking like 25 or thirty-five dollars for each one of these things and you know you, you I'm, I'm three quarters of the damn way into the price that I got into this thing and anyway it, I knew this wasn't gonna be a free lunch I knew there was gonna be some difficulties in here but uh, but anyway I'm gonna try my best to, to get this unseized so uh, I don't know how I'm gonna go about doing it and I'm not gonna record every inch of it at 50 megabits a second so uh, I'm just gonna keep working and bring it back when I have it freed up and let you know what I did letting it sit with the BP blaster was the way to do it and now I've got to go over and and wire wheel this up and get it to free up a little bit. It's sort of moving freely, but it's not the entire range of motion. There's that retaining pin here, and I don't know if I want to pull that completely out of there. Uh, I don't know if it's possible. It looks like it's peened over on that side. Um, anyway, it could be a can of worms. So let me just see if I could do the best I can with, without having to necessarily remove that. Um, and I've still got the issue of, of the... Uh, the bobbin mechanism, it's, it hasn't moved at all so far. Alright, so that is the, I believe this is a Model 20 Singer sewing machine. There's quite a few different names for this, and the, these were made from apparently the 1920s all the way up until the 1970s. Uh, I watched a couple videos on them last night. Nothing, uh, I didn't find anything in the way of a restoration, uh, but I did find some, some interesting things about it. The some of the pieces I didn't quite know what they did now now I've got a better understanding um, just from the descriptors that they used when they were uh, talking about it you know stitch length and things like that so so now I have sort of a a better idea how to how to reckon what's going on here the journals on here are are chowdered up they're 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 relatively bad however they are particularly bad in this places where there are no journals so aesthetically it's not going to be ideal I don't know if I want to attempt uh, to, to rectify these other than just clean them up and maybe uh, maybe sand them down maybe some high fill primer or something like that but I don't see any reason to try to get in here and remake the wheel uh, because I don't think I could replicate these shafts as well even even my best efforts would would probably not be as good as, the, as this one that's sort of beat up so and in all honesty sometimes you just have to sort of recognize your your skill set and your limitations and and I know I'm gonna probably get ripped into comments somebody made an interesting comment the other day they said you know if you're not gonna go all the way with these things you might as well just wire wheel it WD-40 and put it on the shelf because you know what's the point of, uh, of going 90 percent of the way and then just stopping I thought that was an interesting comment, but that's not what I wanted to portray. There's just certain times when, when it, when, for my skill set, my, my my comfortable, the, the, that sort of range where I'm comfortable working, I get to the point where I start treading on destroying shit, and that's not what I want to do in my shop. I want to try to make improvements, and if I need to come back later on when I feel more comfortable, I will. But to go the extra. Like I said in my in my Williams wrench video, I don't want to let perfection get in the way of good enough. It's not just about good enough per se. It's about you know, it's it's good enough for for what I I want or what I think my skill set is at the time. And I'm not going to go ahead and 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 try to wreck this entire job for one tiny pin. 
It just doesn't make sense to me to do that. So yeah, I understand people are going to be disappointed that I didn't get it completely broken down. But, you know, it, the, the whole job could range on this one little pin. And I'm cognizant of that. Maybe later on something will spark, but right now I'm not going to I'm not going to push the limits on this. And I'm going to keep working cuz I'm making good progress, I think. And I'm going to continue to clean this up. I think one of the challenges I'm going to have and the the main the main showpiece of this machine is the bed. And the bed is just just beat to hell. And all of them are polished and chromed and nickel plated or whatever. And this is just very rough, and I don't think I can paint it and and then sand it down and do all that and still have it look as good. I think it needs to be that metal, that polished metal look. I don't, I don't know how this is going to work out. I'm going to try to use this, but if it doesn't work, then I'm going to, then I'm going to have to scribe out a new one uh, and then polish this and grind it out. That, that'll be interesting. That, that I think is within my capabilities. Uh, it might take a couple tries, but you know, I think it is within the realm of something that I could do in my shop. Alright, so I've got this thing pretty well cleaned up. I need to wipe it down with some mineral spirits and then paint it. I think the best way to do it is to paint it and then come back after it's dried and then sort of clean up these high, the reliefs on here and that'll leave the inlaid paint. I've got a gloss black for this, which is what the factory had. Um, I'm trying a Krylon brand this time. Like You've heard me uh, say before that I'm not a huge fan of the Rust-Oleum. I'm not sure that it's completely Rust-Oleum's fault or whether it's the weather. I, I'm not humidity, whatever. I do try to let it dry and the parts are clean as I can get them and you know sometimes I've had a problem with them not sticking. So anyway I'm going to have to probably paint this since I can't remove it. I've tried to get, I, I know this is peened over on this side and again, I'm just not I'm not willing to tempt fate with that. So, so I'm going to clean this up. It's it's coming out pretty nice. I'm glad that I was able to get all the shafting out of it. Um, I've got it wire wheeled up. I think I'm going to put this stuff in the parts washer and just let it soak for uh, a couple days while this stuff while the paint cures. And um, I will bring you back when I think I'm ready to assemble. So, oh, I can say right now that I am missing the thread tensioner right now. I don't know if I'll be able to fabric cobble something that will suffice for now. Meanwhile, I'll try to source one on the internet. Alright, welcome back to the shop. I thought I was making good progress with the sewing machine. Painting it, after cleaning it up and getting everything, the needles, well, sort of painted on now. But anyway, I thought I was making pretty good progress and I thought this was going to look really nice. I ordered new decals from a gentleman in Lakeland. I, um, you know, I was really excited to start reassembling this and, I, and I've got some little bit of I'm trying to machine some stuff on a drill press that video will come later depending on how this works out but but I used the Krylon paint and well let me go get it and I'll show you alright I went and got the the pro professional um, Krylon primer paint it's supposed to be good stuff <coughs> excuse me and I didn't want to start mixing brands, so I said, well, let me get the Krylon stuff. And the paint scheme, I mean, the paint really, the shine on it is just, just, just phenomenal. I mean, I'm really, really happy with the way that looks. But, you know, when I take my fingernail and I dig along here, the goddamn paint comes off of my fingers. And this has been drying. I mean, I put maybe one coat on every 24 hours, give or take light coats. This was bare metal. This was just absolutely as clean as could be. And then I went ahead and sprayed it all down with the a paint gun full of mineral spirits to clean everything off. I made sure not to touch it with my hands and get any oils on it. I'm really trying with this. I'm really trying to do my best. But I can't I can't win for losing. The paint just flakes right off of this thing. And I understand people say, oh you know if you take a tool to it, it's no paint's gonna withstand that. But I'm talking fingernails here, man. This is not, this is not acceptable. And it's, it's not a matter of it not curing. I mean, it's completely cured when it flakes off. It's nice and dry. It just didn't adhere at all. So this is shit. This is very disappointing. I'm. It sets me back. I think the finish on this is good. I just think there's some adhesion problem. I think what I might have to do is shellac this. 
and then and then come back and paint it or something like that. I don't know, but I just I'm about ready to give up on paint. I have the KM the chromatic paint, a chromic paint. It is awesome stuff, but it is so thick that it is going to gum the works up on everything on here, and that'll just spend more time trying to clean it out. I don't think that it'd be the the, the proper paint for this application because it is so thick. So anyway, uh, this is going back in the sandblaster, back to square one. Alright, so those are cleaned back up again. The only thing good about that is it only took a matter of seconds to blow that crap off of there. This is going to be sort of insane, but this says primer and paint all in one. I, maybe, maybe I'm overthinking things, maybe it's simpler, maybe I just put one can on. Let me try this, if not I'll blast it off again.